Good morning, good evening, or good day, and welcome to the Review Z Podcast, the game review of the Z to Z Podcast. The game has achievements, then we try to cover it here. I'm your host, Damien, and thank you for listening. If you've listened to the Z to Z Podcast in the past, then you're familiar with our format. We bring you a separate weekly show covering just reviews of new and sometimes overlooked Xbox titles. And don't forget to check out the regular Z to Z podcast while you're at it. That show's good too, just like this one, but we have more vitamin D. Hello everyone and welcome back to Review Z. I am Prue, one of your hosts, and joining me as always is Mango. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you doing tonight? Uh, good, good. No complaints. Um, so we're here to cover another game for you guys, but as always, first we're going to be talking about what's going on in G-Test this week. Yes, the wonderful GTASC. This is the solo bonus for the upcoming week. It is underlings. End the period in the bottom 25%. Does not include if you're eliminated, though. That doesn't count. If you're eliminated, you're eliminated. Yeah, you don't get the bonus afterwards. Yeah. I wouldn't really do you much good anyways. No, not much good. How did you do on this week's challenge? This week's challenge, which was the lost one. Yes. Which we did not get. No, we did not get. I wasn't trying. I wasn't sure if you were trying it just for fun. No, no. Uh, That... I didn't really want to start a new game just for weird pointed achievements. So, yeah. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we, well, I was going to ask if you were going to go for this one, but I remembered you can't. No, no, um, I, well, I can. I can pretend. But oh, this this week, I guarantee I will not be in the bottom 25%. Oh, that's right. Because you got the big event this week. Yep, Achievement Fest is on the way. So that's exciting. Yeah, it's the Eve, Eve, Eve of Achievement Fest. Three days from now, then. Yes. Thursday? Oh, no. That's three days from now, isn't it? Yeah, sounds, okay. sounds, about, sounds right. about right. Well, actually, that's tomorrow if you're listening to this on Wednesday, which you probably are. Yes, so. then it would be the eve. Yep. All right, let's get into the actual gameplay. Yes, we played a game called Yoku's Island Express. Well, what, what about this game? Can you All right, it was published by Team 17 Software, developed by Villa Gro- Gorilla, and it has a sale price of nineteen ninety nine, and it is a pinball-styled Metrovania side-scroller. I guess is what I would call it. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting because uh, I've, I've never really played a game like this. It's literally, you are the pinball the whole game. Or you're the uh, bug actually, attached to the pinball. Yeah, you're, you're a little attached bug. To the uh, and you, yeah, you push the p- pinball around when you're moving in between like pinball zones. Um, so you, that you kind of have like a little bit of um, control over it at that point. But once you're in like the actual pinball areas... You, you're you not actually controlling the bug anymore. You're just controlling the flippers. Um, yeah, interesting. Are you a big pinball fan? You know, actually, I was a huge pinball fan. Um, the electric, the digital ones, I'm, I kind of like. Like, the pinball arcades are pretty good. Um, I'm not so much a fan of that other big one, which I can't... The name is passing me up right now that's on uh, Xbox Live. But I actually had two real pinball machines. I had an Adams Family and a Doctor Who machine. Ooh, Doctor Who, huh? That's cool. Yeah, it was very, very cool. So, yeah, I do um, like pinball. So so then you must love, love this game, huh? Well, it, it was actually really good. Um, surprisingly good. I wasn't sure what to expect of it. I'm not a huge Metrovania fan. Um, so, sorry, Koosh. I know you are. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I actually really enjoyed the game. The controls were good. The It was colorful. It was yep. playful. It was fun. Uh, not too serious. It doesn't make fun of itself or anything like that, but it's just a a good, relaxing, refreshing game. Yeah, yeah. I learned pretty early on, since this was my first, you know, except for Space Cadet Pinball on Windows 98 or whatever it was. Oh, that's old school. Yeah, this was probably my first time playing pinball in that long. Uh, I learned very quickly that I'm not very good at it, but the game isn't difficult by any means. So, and like, it's, there's no punishment for dying essentially no, there's zero punishment for dying you lose your fruits but yeah you don't actually die and you only lose like four or five fruit at a time which is nothing yeah. so it's very lenient like you said it's very relaxing um so i did i did there's a couple times that i was frustrated because i'm like i just want you to go in this shoot and i kept hitting everything around it but that was more my ineptitude and not the game's fault um so i beat the game and i'm working on like all Metroidvanias, all good Metroidvanias, I guess. Lots of cleanup. At yeah, the this end, game, you know. game has a little bit of cleanup. The story, from what I, I have not finished it, um, but from what I gather from the story and how the gameplay is, it's not that long of a story, but a lot of cleanup to go get all the various things that you need to do in the game. Yeah. Um, so, 
And there's the, the one big annoyance I had with this game, especially now that I'm working on that part of it, is the map, which looks pretty good. Uh, when you press the map button, it zooms out, and you can see the whole world. You know, with fog covering up the places yeah, the you haven't been. the fog covers the places you haven't been. Um, the problem is, and they'll show you icons for different things. And so, like, for one, one thing that you have to do is fill up all these mailboxes, because you're basically the, you're the you're mailman. The, yeah, you're the postmaster. Yeah. Which there is an achievement for becoming the postmaster. Right. And that's one of the cleanup things that I have to do. There's 30 of these mailboxes on this island. And when you go to your map, you don't, you can't tell if it's, if it's stuffed with mail or not, unless you're right next to it, which serves no purpose. That serves no purpose then, because how are you yeah. supposed to know where you're supposed to go? They all, so there's other, there's other collectibles that you can, you can buy maps for and they'll show up on the map. And those ones are clear, like like there's treasure map or there's treasure chests. And if you get the treasure chest map, you'll see very clearly on the map, there's one. And as soon as you open it, it disappears. But for these mailboxes, it's not the case for whatever reason. That's and there's a couple of put everything else things. in, but not the mailbox. Yeah, it's frustrating. So unless I'm doing something wrong, which is definitely possible. Um, so I think I probably have like 28 or 29 of the 30 that I need. And I just don't know where the last one is. And the map is... It's pretty just big. big enough yeah, just yeah, to be enough. annoying to yeah. try to search for all of those. So that was my biggest frustration I had. Yeah, would you say uh, Tesla Grad would be the other recent one that a lot of the community has played recently? I would say the map's probably, what, twice the size of that? Maybe? Um, Yeah, m maybe. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Tesla Grad feels way more vertical. If, yeah, if this, memory is more, this is more... Well, this has kind of got a lot of vertical. It's more horizontal, I would say. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's a bigger... Out. It's it's bigger than Tesseract, I'd say. Um, but it's you can unlock some fast travel later on in the game, which definitely, definitely helps. Yeah, I, I have not gotten to the point of the fast travel because I'm guessing that's later in the game. Mm -hmm. I I did get I mean, like I said, it is relaxing. The controls are good, but they it gets a little frustrating when you did like you were saying, just get on that one shoot. You miss, miss, miss. Yeah, they fall down. Um but again, no penalty for death. Um, so how many of the achievements do you have out of the game then so far? I have 24 of the 31 achievements. Okay. And yep. literally the the ones I don't have are all get all the upgrades, find get the biggest wallet, you know, all the treasure chests. Those ones specifically. All the, and I'm not, all the collectibles. Yep, all the collectibles. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I might wait to come back to it once there's like guides and stuff out there just because... Like I said, the map isn't super duper useful for for some of that stuff, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I might just power through and go for it because it's not that. Like I said, once you get to a place and you see the you'll, you kind of understand the the mechanics well enough that you're like, oh, OK, I have to use this ability to get to that thing. It's not super challenging in that respect. It's just sometimes it's frustrating to get to that point. All right, well, let's talk about some more of the achievements, too. So in, there's 31 achievements uh, right now, currently in TA. It's about a 1.8 ratio game for the whole completion. 11 of them are storyline. Uh, there's 13 that are collectible related, though. So quite a few, which yep. is all at the end. And I think it has one of the more, I'll call it more annoying achievements, if you are sitting and watching somebody play the game with the speakers on. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a there's two achievements for blowing a party horn, and it's like a New Year's Eve type pot, party horn. So the really high pitched <laughs> noise, and you have to do it a hundred and a thousand times. So as I was playing it, my daughter goes, "Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm blowing my party horn. Why, That's Dad? Funny. There's an achievement for it." Uh, yeah, and it's it's like one of those sound effects, too, that you can tell is a little bit louder than the rest of the game anyways. Totally. It drowns out everything in the game. Yep. <laughs> so um, I did that just... that was I think that's the last one I got um, while I decided I was giving up on the collectibles for now. And I muted because I didn't want to hear it. Yeah, I did, uh, I did not. I was doing it because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have anybody to annoy, so I, I guess that's the difference there. So, yeah, so um, if you're playing this game and if you want to annoy somebody, just... You sit there and push the A button over and over and over again. and Yeah, if you want to annoy somebody and get achievements at the same time. Yes. That's a perfect game for it. Yes, totally. There's not a lot of criticism I can give to this game. Honestly, it's very good. 
It's very, very good. It's very polished. It's well done. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, no ginormous gameplay issues or there's no tech, the technical, it's flawless. You know, it's, it's the, it looks pretty. Like you said, the music is nice and pleasant. Yeah. And um, all the achievements are doable. There's no disabled, discontinued, broken, any kind of achievement. So they're all doable. Yeah. If and you're I, looking, I think the sale price is a good price for it, for what you get. It's a lot of game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, the TA estimation is at 12 to 15 hours. Uh, um, I would say that's probably pretty reasonable. Yeah, I'd say that's about the, from what I can tell from what's needed in the game and my progress, I'd say that's probably accurate. I probably maybe the most people will probably do it between 14 and 15. If you're better with the controls with the pinball, you can probably do it under right around the, about the 12 hour point. I wonder, you know, how th- this type of game is known sometimes for speed runs. I wonder if people, anybody's going to go for a Yoku's Island Express speed run. Because uh, you probably could, pair, if you knew exactly what you were doing and were very good at it, you could probably do it quite quickly. Yeah, you, you'd ha- you could. You'd have to be really good with the pinball angles, though. Like You'd have to get them instantly. Yeah. Yep. Which would be fun yes. to watch. I'm sure it would. It would actually be quite cool. So I, uh, we had Koosh on this past... Uh, Zed and he said that he we all know he's a huge Metroidvania fan but he also mentioned that he's a massive pinball fan as well so this is basically his favorite game ever ever ever. yeah we had we talked a little bit about it on the show Uh, so go ahead and have a listen to that but yeah really nothing bad to say the solid solid game for sure yeah I'd I'd say if you're interested in Metroidvanias and even if you're not a huge fan in the pinball games uh, I think it's a very unique experience and it's well worth checking out yeah, if you're if you're a fan of one or the other, yeah, it's perfect. It's, it does well at both. So and it's cool blending that you know you never really probably would have thought of before. So yeah, I actually looked at the developers' notes on it, and they they when they first started programming the game, they wanted they called it Open Pinball World. Huh. So yeah, to get an idea, that's what it kind of is. That seems appropriate. Yeah. yeah. So check it out. It's called Yoku's Island Express, and it's on sale for twenty dollars. Yep. Check it out. All right, everybody, and we will catch, well, we won't catch you next week, but we will catch you the week after that. So, all right, everyone, have a good one. Thanks, guys.